Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how to approach a coach if you're not getting the playing time that you want because it's really important. And I've had to actually counsel a bunch of kids on this recently. So recently, two different players have just absolutely – I'm not going to – shouldn't say that I shouldn't say that but um, they've just imploded when they got their chance so both were in varsity baseball both got a chance to pitch and prove themselves and they proved very little they did not do well so the coach now goes from giving them a shot having you know optimism about them to uh he just didn't have it maybe he doesn't have it uh, maybe I can't ever trust him on the mound again, right? So I've been there in 2012. Uh, I pitched so bad for Fargo, Moorhead, uh, the Red Hawks, which are a perennially winning team. They had a very, I wouldn't say cutthroat. Well, they had a very cutthroat manager, but they had a winning culture. They're well supported. They have a great, a great organization and great fans up there. Uh, and uh, I just pitched god awful for them. And there was a moment, and this has been elaborated on episode 13 of my podcast, so if you want to hear that full story, I'm sure I'll tell it again in one of these mini ones, but uh, basically my coach embarrassed me in front of the whole team, shouting at the top of his lungs that I stink. Uh, and then a day or two later, I kind of groveled into his office, and I said, look, I'm struggling. This isn't me. I know I'm better than this. I just want to pitch better. I just want to be a contributing member of the team. Please just help me. I don't know what to do. That was, that was what I came to him with. And from this cutthroat guy, he really gave me the benefit of the doubt for the rest of that season. I mean, he, if honestly, he was just good to me, giving me chances and supporting me despite being kind of a monster to me prior to that. And it was really just because I came to him as a person and I was like, look, I want to help you. It wasn't about me. It was I wanted to be valuable for my team. And uh, I gave up like eight runs in four innings a couple weeks later. And instead of him embarrassing me again or just getting rid of me, uh, he actually like put his hand on my shoulder and said, hey, we're going to like, this is going to get better. Something to that effect. Um, and I was just like, what? But it was because of the way that I came to him and responded to him. So again, I've had two kids who got their chances recently and just absolutely blew it to take my own name in vain. Um, and I've given them the same advice, which is you need to take your coach aside and ask him, hey, can I, can I talk to you? Can I come into your office after hours or before hours or whatever? And just explain to him what I explained to you because no coach, I mean, coaches, they're terrible coaches. There are coaches who are completely awful people. But most of them have big hearts and they do it because they want to help kids. They love the game. They want to be involved with all of it. They want to stay young and they just want to see kids succeed. So when you, in the vast majority of these situations, if you approach someone and say, Hey, look, I know I blew my chance and I know I might not deserve another one, but I just want to help this team. So ask them, what can I do to help the team? I'll do whatever it takes. If you want me to throw more bullpens, if you want me to throw pitch JV games, if that's an option for you, you want me to go down to pitch freshman games if that's an option? Um, just tell me what I can do. If you want me to mop up and pitch in 12 to 1 blowout, I'll do it. Just let me know what I can do because I want to contribute to the team. I know I'm better than this, and I want to get I want to restore your faith in me. The worst thing you can do as a player is just is just after you implode like that, number one, be a bad teammate. Go off and sulk in the dugout, make excuses for yourself, blame other people, anything like that. That's just going to make it worse because they're going to expect worse results, and now you're pulling other people down into the sinking ship with you. Um, so you don't want to ruin your team's culture, and you don't want to draw more attention to yourself in a negative way. What you do want to do is take ownership of it, you know, and, and when they understand that you understand why you didn't pitch well or why you didn't hit well or why you didn't do whatever it was that you did while you just imploded in the game, this is by no means limited to pitchers, um, then they're going to say, okay, he understands what he did. He understands where he fell short. He understands why when he – turned in a performance below my own expectations and what's expected of a varsity baseball player or 
varsity softball player, a collegiate softball player, base, whatever. Um, then they say, okay, he gets it. He knows. Let's work together now to find a solution. That's what coaches are going to do if you come to them in that regard. Uh, so what you, number one, want to do as a player, go talk to the coach in that capacity. Now, say you're not playing. Say you're just not getting the playing time that you want. Say you think you should be starting at third base, but a guy who maybe is inferior to you is starting at third base. Or you're the second string catcher, but you're pretty sure you're better than that guy. How do you approach that situation? That one's a little trickier. Number one, if your parent talks to the coach for you, shame on both of you, that's not going to end well, and that's not the way to go about it. It's not your parents' business why you're not playing. Now, if the coach does something stupid or the coach is clearly, I don't know, crossing a line, maybe it's nepotism, maybe it's obvious favoritism, maybe it's, um, I don't know. There's, there are certainly some scenarios in which a parent can talk to a coach. But most of the time, parents are like, why is my son not starting? And it's r extremely difficult for a coach to say, well, it's because your son's not as good as you think he is. I hope I don't have to have that conversation with parents because I don't want to say those words because it's their son. I, I, I get it that how do, you tell, how do you tell a parent that their kid actually like stinks when they think they're pretty good? There's no good way to do it. You know, it's not going to make anyone feel good. We've cut players from my organization. We'll continue to have to do that. Um, it's not an easy conversation to have. And I don't know that anyone's receptive. Oh, oh, yo, oh, that makes sense. Oh, you don't play him because he stinks. I get it now. Like, that's not going to go well. And when we as people ask people why, I try, I, and I've learned from a couple different books that you should in general – when you're questioning someone, not use the word why. So if you're going to a coach saying, why am I not playing? Or why am I not playing in front of this person? Why puts people into a defensive mode? So if you can just, at the very least, rephrase the question as a player, say, hey, coach, instead of saying, why am I not playing in front of Johnny? You could say, what does Johnny do better than I do to earn the more playing, to earn the starting job over me? That's a very different question than why does Johnny play over me or why do you think Johnny's better than me? Uh, the word why is just, it's kind of like a landmine and you should avoid it at all costs, whether you're a parent or a player. In general, parents, you're best off not talking to coaches about playing time. Um, it, it's, just the, it's just the right way to go about it because coaches in general have a lot to handle. Again, there's no good way for them to tell you that your kid's not as good as you think he is you as a parent are probably not a very good judge of his talent. You're also probably not as aware of his shortcomings, of his personality on the field, um, of the way he interacts with his teammates. You're maybe not as privy to that information as you think. Now, I understand that the parent is the parent, and you know your son better than anyone else, but I think it's very difficult to be objective about his, his personality. You know, maybe you think he's a hard worker, but maybe compared to the rest of the team, he's not. Maybe you think he's a really uh, supportive teammate but maybe he's not you know maybe in the dugout he's just kind of chirping and you don't see that part of him so it's tough uh you might get a lot of stuff that you don't want to hear when you ask that so I don't know if there's a good time um as a parent to question coaches unless they're just making decisions that don't seem to make any sense at all and I think you should bounce a lot of this off of other parents who are maybe not your best friends as well if you're gonna decide like I think I need to speak with the coach um and if you're at the collegiate level or the pro level, there's never a time where you should talk to the coach. If your son's not playing at a certain college, it's completely and utterly only between the player and his coach. At that age, he's a grown man. He needs to fight his own battles. If you're talking to college coaches about your son or daughter's playing time, you just don't get it. You probably never will. Um, but in general, playing time is tough. When players come to coaches with humility – talk about being a team player, talk about being committed to helping the team win, asking what they can do to get better for the team, to get more playing time for themselves, when they're asking in a sense that it's about the team and they're taking responsibility for some of their previous actions. So if I'm, I'm example player number one, you can call me Exampy. Hey, coach. Hey, Exampy. Well, uh, I know I haven't been playing as much. I know I started the year starting at second base, but now I've, I've been sitting a lot more. Um, and I know Johnny, who's 
been starting is a good player. Um, and I know I made a lot of errors and I, I had some bad at bats and I missed some signs. And, uh, I, I know I've, I've, I've done some things to maybe lose that job, but I'd love to know what I can do to hopefully be more competitive at second base and what you think I can improve on to hopefully earn more playing time this year. You know, I'm willing to play the outfield. I'm willing to do whatever it is that you want me to do just to get on the field because I want to help our team. Um, but if you want me to stay earlier for ground balls, if you want me to stay later for, you know, for more T work or, you know, can I, do you want me to steal more bases? Like, what is it, how could I become one day a starting second baseman for that team? If you asked me that personally, I'd be A, extremely impressed. I'd be B, already scheming to find ways to get you in the lineup. Because there's just not enough kids who have that attitude, that mentality, or that level of maturity to say, okay, I recognize that I'm falling short. I don't want to fall short anymore. Can you help me get from A to B? Uh, that's our job as coaches. So even if you're just doing that, making it up just to manipulate me, it would for sure work. So that's kind of how I would go about it. All right. So just a little bit today about coaching and playing time.